Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. So I've gotten a few requests lately on how to create a seamless vector hand-drawn pattern using Illustrator. And there are really two ways to do this. The first way, which I'm gonna show you in this tutorial, is how to create that seamless pattern using any version of Illustrator, no matter how old it is. The other version is using the pattern maker which was new to illustrator in cs6 and newer so that could be a tutorial all on its own so i will create a tutorial for that pattern maker there's just so many settings that there's a lot of customization that you can do so i for this first tutorial i wanted to do a version of creating a seamless pattern just to help everybody out no matter what version you're on so look for that tutorial with the pattern maker in the near future but for today we're just going to use the more basic method for anyone, no matter what version you're using. So we're gonna create this pattern that you see on the screen. This is the final outcome of what we're gonna be creating. And then we're also gonna create a version that has a background color. So it makes the pattern a lot more versatile. Patterns are super fun and really gratifying because it's really awesome to see your pattern, no matter how big you make your canvas, to see it repeat the way it does. So this entire pattern was created using my 100 vector leaves and flourishes kit over here. So all I did was grab elements from the kit, reposition, recolor, and put it on a square artboard. It's really important. You don't have to use the same measurements I'm using. I'm using a three inch by three inch artboard, but definitely feel free to use any measurement that you want. Just make sure that your height and your length are exactly the same, so you end up with a square. And these are the colors that I'm using. I just pulled these from cooler.adobe.com probably pronounced color but it looks like cooler so I always say cooler but I'm gonna give you this color scheme so definitely feel free to steal it if you want to use it too so I'm just gonna click on each color and if you look over here in the CMYK build uh, you can just pause the video and just write these down if you want to use them so this is the light blue the dark blue the lime green the sea foam and then this kind of slate blue tealish color okay so now that you have all of your elements on a square artboard we're gonna just Kind of pick up from here the most important thing to remember whenever you're creating a pattern is whatever's on the left side needs to appear on the right side and vice versa whatever's on the top also needs to appear on the bottom and vice versa so we're just going to jump right in and start that editing process so what i always do is i just click and rubber band select just along this artboard edge because all i need is any elements that are hitting that artboard edge and in this case it's just this one element so the next thing you need to do is hit command c or control c on a pc to copy it release command f or control f on a pc to paste it on top now we need to take this element and position it exactly where it falls on this line, only on this side of the artboard. So in order to do that, remember that from left to right is your X axis and from top to bottom is your Y axis. So since my artboard is three inches wide, I need to add three inches to its position. So up here where it has the X axis, all I'm gonna do is hit plus three and hit enter and that repositions it. So now is the time where you really adjust your elements so everything looks in harmony and fits really nicely together because now that I've moved this here, I can't do anything with this element. I can't tweak it, rotate it, reposition it, nothing. All I can do is adjust the elements that are around it. So I'm gonna zoom in here and maybe I don't need this element and this one could definitely get smaller. So just remember to hold shift whenever you're reducing or enlarging your elements just to maintain your proportions and there we go so that feels a lot better so now we're going to do the same thing with the elements that are hitting this side and move them over here so i'm just going to once again rubber band select just along this line and i've already got this element on both sides so i don't need it again so just to deselect it hold shift and click and now i'm going to do the same thing i did before command c or control c on a pc to copy release, command F or control F on a PC to paste on front, on top. So now I need to take these elements and move them over here. But since I'm moving it kind of backwards, I need to subtract three inches. So up here on my X axis, I'm just gonna hit the hyphen key and three and hit enter. And now these are positioned. And now you can see I've got a little bit of adjusting I need to do just so everything stays really harmonious. So maybe I reduce this one down, this is feeling kind of big. This also feels a little big, so that feels better. This one needs to move. Maybe I don't need this one. Maybe this one moves up. This moves over. Okay, that looks good. 
All right, so everything we just did with the left and the right side, we're gonna do the exact same thing with the top and bottom. So once again, I'm just gonna select along the top of my artboard, and it's just these two elements. So I'm gonna hit Command C or Control C on a PC to copy, release, Command F or Control F on a PC to paste on top. Now I need to move these three inches down, but I'm on my Y axis this time. So up here where it says Y, I'm gonna hit the plus sign and three, hit enter, and now this is repositioned down here. So now is the time I can come in here and readjust the position of some of these other elements. Remember not to touch the ones that you just moved. Okay. So now if I look down here, outside of these two elements that we know already exist on the top and the bottom, these three elements are hitting that bottom side of the artboard. So these are the elements that I need to repeat up on the top. So I'm gonna hit Command C or Control C to copy, release, Command F or Control F on a PC to paste on top. Now I need to move these up to the top, but this time it's a, I'm subtracting three inches. So up on your Y axis, hit the hyphen key, three, and hit enter. And now these are up here. And now is the perfect opportunity to come in, just relook at your swatch and kind of readjust or reposition anything that you wanna do. So any final changes right now? All right, so once you're happy with how everything looks, you're gonna rubber band select everything and you're gonna group it together. So Command G or Control G on a PC and now all these elements are grouped. The next thing I need to do is set my background color. So I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard, which is the shortcut for your rectangle tool, double click, and I'm gonna make sure my rectangle is three inches by three inches. So it's the exact same size as my artboard and hit okay. And I'm gonna make sure it's the color I want, which is not this color. So I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard and eyedropper this kind of slate color. And now what I always do is I kind of move it over where I need it to be positioned, but I know that it needs to directly line up with the square. So uh, kind of a cheat for always putting it right on the line is whatever your width and height is, it's half of that. So where my X is, I'm gonna do 1.5, and my Y, I'm gonna do the same 1.5, and now I know that it's exactly where it's supposed to be. Since this is a background, I need to send it to the back. You can hit Command, Shift, Open Bracket as the shortcut to send it to the back, or you can right click, Arrange, Send it Back. Okay, so whenever you're setting a background color, you need two squares. The first square acts as your background color. The second square will be used as your clipping mask. So I'm gonna take this square and I'm gonna copy it and paste it up on top, just like we did with all the side artwork. So I'm gonna hit Command C or Control C to copy, release, Command F or Control F to paste on top. Now with the square still selected, I'm gonna hold Shift and select any of my elements because these are all grouped, they'll all select at once. Right click, make clipping mask. And now this is looking like a nice little swatch. The important thing to remember whenever you're creating a pattern swatch is the pattern swatch will consider any artwork that extends beyond your clipping mask. So even though these look invisible right now, it will consider that extra space. So we need to make sure we eliminate any extra artwork that extends beyond the sides. The kicker to this is that once you remove those items, you can no longer edit your swatch. And I like the ability to always go back and edit my artwork. So I always either save a copy or I just make a copy of the swatch within the same file. So that's what I'm going to do right here. So I'm just going to select everything, making sure I grab my background color too. I'm going to hold Alt, click, drag, hold shift if you'd like to keep it straight. And then if you come to your Pathfinder palette over here, which you can get to by going Window, Pathfinder, you're just going to click on this little icon, which is your crop. So just click on that and then open your swatches palette and all you and you can get to swatches by doing the same thing window swatches and all you do is like is select this whole swatch click and drag it right in and as you can see it added a little swatch right here now before I reveal the big surprise I'm going to remove the background this time so I'm just going to hit a on my keyboard select the background and then just delete it and now I can select my pattern swatch I'm gonna hold Alt, click and drag up, come back to my Pathfinder, click Crop, come back to my swatches, and then click and drag right into my swatches, and now you can see it added another swatch right here. So now I'm gonna come over here, hit M on my keyboard, draw a big rectangle, the time of truth. So I'm just gonna click on this little swatch, and there we go, it's all filled in. And if I click in my other swatch, there's the other one. But say maybe the, the elements in here, this pattern itself, 
feels too big to me. Maybe I want it to appear smaller. If you want to show your pattern on a smaller scale, all you have to do is right click, transform, scale, and you want to make sure transform objects is unchecked and you always want to make sure your preview is on so you can see. So this is what 150% looks like, but maybe I want to come down to 50%. So if you just check your preview on and off, you can see what your pattern looks like smaller and you can click on your other non-background one, trans or transform, scale, do the same thing. Maybe you want this one to be really big, 150, and now it's nice and big. Okay, so what if you drew a rectangle, but you realize later on that you needed it to be slightly longer? So if I hit V and I just grab my the edge of my rectangle and I drag it out, it stretches the entire pattern. That looks terrible. So in order to fix that, all you have to do is come back over to your swatches palette and just click your swatch and it corrects everything. So here's the darker one. If I want it a little taller, it's all stretched out and really ugly and just click the swatch again. Now it's perfect. So that's just a little quick tip on adjusting your pattern no matter what you put it on. So that's how you create a hand-drawn vector seamless pattern using Illustrator, any version of Illustrator. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And also head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And I will also leave a link to that vector kit in case you want to check that out. Just look in the video description for that. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.